Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, and this is JDude360 in the Ram 2. It's an American, although it isn't, it's Canadian, Tier 5 Premium Medium Tank. Funny old tank, the Ram 2. Almost 2,000 of them were built, but they never saw combat. Why did they never see combat, Jingles? Good question. Glad you asked. What actually happened was, uh, well... Britain had lost all of its tanks on the beaches of Dunkirk as it withdrew from uh, Europe in 1940. And uh, British tank production wasn't up to the demand of the number of tanks that the British Army needed. So America started building lots and lots of tanks for the British. Canada, of course, wanted to equip its army with tanks, but it had a problem because Canada had never built a tank before. So they said to the Americans, well, can we, you know, buy some tanks from you? America said, sorry, dude, uh, we're, we're kind of busy here building tanks for the British. So Canada said, well, OK, um, what designs have you got? And, and we'll build our own. So America said, well, here you go, got this, uh, this M3. And Canada said, are you trying to be funny? <laughs> That's not a tank. Where's the turret? And America said, oh, turrets are... Turrets are old news. Look at the gun on the side. 75mm gun. Yeah, good stuff. And Canada said, yeah, well, tell you what, we'll, we'll take it, but we'll, we're going to put a turret on. We're going to make a proper tank out of it. Um, and that's basically the Ram 2. It was, I mean, not just the turret, but it also had a cast hull rather than a riveted hull, so it was actually armoured better than the M3, and it wasn't as tall, despite the fact that it had this turret on top. 57mm gun or six pounder gun um, not a bad tank but the problem was that Canada just took so long building the things because they'd never built a tank before that by the time these things were ready America was starting to produce the M4 Sherman and so Canada said ah, now that's a tank and, uh, <laughs> and these things never actually saw combat although a, a number of them were converted into armored personnel carriers or flamethrower tanks and, and used for training purposes so, the Ram 2, the Canadian tank that never really was, getting shot in the ass by his own team here. <laughs> and there you go, that's what Canada thinks of the M3 Lee. <laughs> How appropriate. You hardly ever see these things in random battles in World of Tanks, and it's not a bad little tier 5 premium tank. The armour is all right, it's got 76 millimetres of armour at the front and it's sloped, um, 63 millimetres at the side. The gun, the uh, 57 millimetre six pounder gun, it, the average damage is low, it's only 75 damage per shot, but the rate of fire is over 26 shots per minute because it's just a 57 millimetre gun. The six pounder gun was a very good little anti-tank gun and it has 103 millimetres of penetration. And it's quick. It's easily as good as the M4 Sherman, even if it wasn't as good as the M4 Sherman in real life, it certainly is in World of Tanks. J-Dude took a shot from that T14 from the front, so in true medium tank fashion he just sidles up behind him and prepares to unleash a dose of surprise butt sex. <laughs> a look at the rate of fire. T14's doomed. No, there's nothing he can do, he's just trying to finish off the light tank in front of him and, uh, well, <laughs> he can't even do that. The rate of fire on this gun is just so fast. Now, that T14 that he just killed is also a Tier 5 premium tank. It's the American Heavy, whereas the Ram 2 is the American, well, even though it's really Canadian, medium. But the difference between the two is that the T14 has just been removed from the gift shop because it has premium matchmaking. You can't buy the T14 anymore. The Ram 2 does not have premium matchmaking, so you're always going to be able to buy the Ram 2. Has he just scored his seventh kill? <laughs> Somebody stop him. The Ram 2 does struggle a little when it gets into a tier 7 game, however. 102mm of penetration. It just can't penetrate anything with um, 120mm or more effective armour, including sloping. For that, you pretty much either have to get around the sides and rear, or start using premium ammo. Oh, here's another two victims. Get the A20! Get the A20! Kill it! Kill it! He's killed it! Now, round the Stuart! Yay! There it is! <laughs> Nine kills! You see what he did there? He, he rammed. He got a ram kill on... Yeah? He, never mind. I'll get my coat. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a lot funnier in my head. Um, <laughs> and that, by the way, is the last tank on the enemy team, T14. So he had 17 rounds of APCR. He's loading it for this bad boy. His tracks have been blown off. T14 trying to get around his flank. Oh, tracks back up. Angle the armour. Oh, big fat side of the T14. And bingo. Ten kills. Pool's medal. Jobs are good. For me, though, the most surprising thing about that game is not the ace tanker, the pool's medal, steel wall, high calibre, or top gun. It's the fact that he fired eight rounds of his 17 premium ammunition loadout in that match, all against the T14 at the end to ensure he got the last kill. And he doesn't run a premium account. And he still managed to turn a profit. So, basically the theme of today is mid and low tier tank battles. Because I'm always showing you tier 8, 9 and 10 games. And a number of you are getting a bit frustrated because I'm constantly showing you the tanks that you're going to have one day. Rather than the tanks that you're currently driving right now. So, this is Nomad 6 in the Soviet tier 6 medium tank, the T-34-85. And he's platooned up on Redshire with his buddy in the Sherman Jumbo. Although I suspect he's not his buddy anymore. And uh, when you see the end of this match, <laughs> you'll, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> oops, sorry. Um, so yeah, some mid-tier tank action. And I never really used to like the T-3485. Back when I was grinding my way up through the Soviet medium tank line way back in the dawn of prehistory and that's because at the time many many patches ago the top gun on the T-3485 was the 100mm D10T the idiot gun um, and it was a terrible terrible gun on this tank it, the only thing it had going for it was higher alpha damage than the 85mm gun it had horrific accuracy, horrible aiming time, lousy gun depression, the penetration wasn't that good, and it just wasn't a medium tank gun. But you can imagine what it's like when you're in a fast medium like the T-3485 and you get around the flank of an enemy tank, you fire and it misses, <laughs> and, or it bounces, and you've got a 10 second reload on a medium tank gun, you're just dead before the gun reloads. The problem was you pretty much had to use that 100mm gun on the T-3485 because the 85mm guns which were available for the tank at the time were pretty terrible as well so you know if you're going to have to choose between a whole bunch of bad guns you may as well have the one with the highest alpha damage. Well many many patches back a whole bunch of mid-tier machines that had that 100mm gun had it removed and they got new 85mm guns instead which is what you have now on the T-3485 and it's a really really good mid-tier medium tank gun. And unless I'm very much mistaken, Nomad 6 is coming to that conclusion as well because he has just rebought the T-3485 in this game purely to take part in stronghold mode. So I think this is the first time he's really played this tank with this new 85mm gun as well despite the fact that it's been around for ages. And uh, he's not doing too badly. He's managed to secure two kills here on Redshire in encounter mode. So, of course, the flag is all the way over the other side of the map. And, oh, that, <laughs> you couldn't do that with the 100mm gun that this tank used to have. It would have just missed, and he would have then killed you while it was reloading. Um, this is just such a better gun to be having on a tank like this. It's just such a better tank with this 85mm gun. In this situation, with the old 100mm, well first of all he would have had to stop and aim for over 3 seconds, and then it probably would have missed anyway. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there you go. With the 85mm, two cap resets, and the length of time it would have taken him to aim, miss, and not reset with the old 100mm. It's just such a better gun. And that's the whole point of the tank anyway. It was famous for having this 85mm gun. Oh, cover your eyes. Cruelty to small tanks. <laughs> he stood no chance. But there's clearly still some more of them in the cap circle. Um, oh, there's one. And, oh, cheeky shot on the backside from the M3 lead there. M3 backs up, and that's going to cost him his second shot, because there it is. <laughs> he has pumped it right into the hill in front of him. And then the jumbo rolls around the corner and just derps him right in the face with a 105mm high explosive shell. A uh, Panzer. Look <laughs> at this guy. Oh my god, it's a jumbo. Run away. Oh crap, T34A5. 
And there's another one, Panzer IV. Now, and it, it's a, it's the old bait and switch, isn't it? It's look this way, look this way, should have been looking behind you. Sets him up for a perfect, easy kill from the Sherman Jumbo, and he misses. <laughs> Point blank range. All right, fair enough. I'll take the kill. Watch what this enemy team are doing. You'd think it would make more sense, given that there are three tier five and six medium tanks behind them in the cap circle, that it would make more sense for them to back up from where they are, get over onto the other side of the hill so the Chinookai and the KV-1S over there can't shoot at them, and while they outnumber them, deal with these three medium tanks. But no. <laughs> they might win if they do that. No, instead, they're going to attack... <laughs> <laughs> where they can be shot at from in front and behind and they attacked the Chinookai and the KV-1S and yeah they killed them but it's not done them any good has it well the kill on the KV-1S just gave him a Radley Walters medal two more and he's in line for a Pools medal okay one more <laughs> and he's in line for a Pools medal there's only two enemy tanks left he's thinking about going for the Panzer III but T-34 lands a good hit on him T-34 is going to kill him which means they're going to have to kill this T-150. Now, luckily, he's platooned up with one of the only two tanks left on his team, so they can work together to ensure that he gets a pools medal out of this. And his buddy there in the Sherman saying, go for it. I'll soften him up with a high explosive. It's a T-150. High explosive is never going to penetrate him from the front. And he's peppering him with a high explosive shots there, and it's only doing about 83 damage. It is, of course, at this point when the high explosive decides to penetrate, do full damage, take the kill. <laughs> <laughs> and he's all right that's it see if i platoon with you again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but still can't really complain aside from the rabbi walters they also got a brothers in arms and a crucial contribution 12 kills between the two of them and that's it for today's video. Well, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And today's video, of course, was in response to uh, a fair number of people who have been saying that they wanted to see more of the tanks that they play on a regular basis rather than the tier 8, 9 and 10 tanks that they hope to be playing one day. So thank you to JD Rule 360 in the Ram 2 and Nomad 6 in the T-3485 and no thanks <laughs> to Banished Zero in the Sherman Jumbo for his overzealous support fire with his 105mm howitzer right at the end, robbing Nomad 6 of his pools medal in the T-3485. As always, folks, take care, and I'll catch you next time.